It's time to teach these Italians a thing or two about food. And thus began my disastrous attempt to make American barbecue for a whole bunch of hungry Italians. This video is proudly sponsored by ButcherBox. Visit the link in the description because new members receive ground beef in every box for the lifetime of their membership. Back in March, my wife Ava and I were visiting her family in Calabria, Italy. We'd been there for a couple of months and I was just treated to the most amazing food. Day after day, they made incredibly delicious dishes for me. And I was starting to feel like I wanted to give back to them a little bit. I wanted to share some of my culture. And I'm not gonna lie, I wanted to show off that I had some tricks up my sleeve too. I decided to go with barbecue. The reason being that it's Ava's favorite food in America. She's a barbecue junkie. I figured if she would like it, her family would probably like it. Now here's the thing. I'm an expert at eating barbecue, but I'd only ever cooked it once. I smoked a pork butt uh, on this tiny little crappy grill, but it came out amazing. Ava even said that it was the best meat of her life. And she doesn't lie about food to be polite. So I was feeling pretty chuffed with myself at the time, pretty confident. And so when I decided to cook barbecue for a whole bunch of people, I thought, I've got this down, no problem. So I ordered a smoker, it arrived in the mail, and I was ready to begin. Got some barbecue? Got some barbecue? I should explain something before we proceed. At this time in Italy, not only was there a mask mandate if you were outside, there was also a curfew in effect. So you couldn't leave your house after dark, and if you got caught, there were some pretty serious penalties. This posed a problem because you need to smoke outside, obviously, but Ava's house, there was nowhere where you could do so without being outside and breaking the curfew. However, Ava's father, Turi, had a second house that nobody lived in. It was just kind of used for storage and stuff, and it had this big balcony, so we decided that was the best place for me to cook the barbecue. But that also meant that I would have to spend the night at this house that was not in any way furnished to be livable. Uh, there was no bed. So I was sort of just planning on pulling an all-nighter. I guess I better put this thing together. So this is uh, this kind of generic seeming, no name brand smoker that I found on Amazon Italia for a suspiciously low price. It seems to be like a ripoff of a Weber Smoky Mountain, um, which I've also never used. So let's see if we can figure it out. Yeah. Mangia pasta. Collegare le gambe alla padella del fuoco. I guess this just sits there? That doesn't seem right, but I think that's how it goes. Ta-da! Time to make some sauce. I decided to make North Carolina style barbecue, partly because it's the barbecue I'm most familiar with. I used to live in North Carolina, and also because it's a, it's a vinegar based sauce. I just had this feeling that maybe those sort of sugary, syrupy sauces would be like a bit too much. So I had my smoker, I had my sauce. Now it's just time to go pick up the meat. How do you say pork shoulder? Spalla di maiale. Spalla di maiale. How do you say 10 pounds? 10 libre. 10 libre. Libre. 10 libre. Spa, spa, spa. Spalla di maiale. Spalla di maiale. How much meat 
ounces did you get? I forgot how to say pounds. I think this is 10 kilos. Ah, but 10 kilos of pork meat. Uh, I hope people are hungry. I was estimating that with that amount of meat, it would take about 20 hours to cook. Uh, I was completely wrong about that, by the way. Because I wanted the barbecue to be ready for Sunday lunch the next day, I was gonna start it on Saturday afternoon, cook overnight, and have it be ready, in theory, by lunch. But the meat is on there. I've got applewood smoking down below, and uh, the grill's coming up to temp. I'm aiming for uh, 225 degrees at 174. And uh, now the long, long wait begins. Now that I was cooking, members of Ava's family started dropping in to see how things were going. Mama Rosa, no. <laughs> que pensi? Non cominciare. I think there was a little more than curiosity behind their visits. I think they might have been a little worried that I was going to burn their house down. Ask if she's ready for some barbecue. Se pronta per il barbecue. Se, se, se. <laughs> Ava, being the true champ that she is, decided to spend the night with me at this second house to keep me company while I was cooking all night. Well, the sun is starting to set. It's getting darker, getting colder, still cooking away. Ava, are you bored yet? Uh, no, actually, I'm going to have another glass of wine. <laughs> I'm pretty relaxed today. You know, we've still got a good, like, mm, 15 hours maybe to go. I have a bunch of wine over there waiting for me. Don't worry, Arthur. So it's about 10 o'clock. We definitely hit the dreaded stall. For those who aren't familiar, the stall is when barbecue hits a certain temperature. It just stays there for hours. And that's where we're at now. So it's taken a process that isn't exactly thrilling and made it even more exciting. It's a lot of waiting and waiting and waiting. While we wait, how about a quick word from today's video sponsor? If you are a carnivore like me, then you need to check out ButcherBox. It's an amazing subscription service that ships high quality, delicious meat right to your door. Here's how it works. You pick what kind of box you want. They have several curated options, or you can just create your own custom box with just the meat that you like. You pick the frequency, however often you want it to arrive, it's up to you, and they ship it to you. ButcherBox provides an unbeatable value. It's incredibly convenient, and it's all flexible. We were actually ButcherBox customers before we started working with them, not only because their meat is delicious, but because it's humanely raised. ButcherBox really cares where their meat comes from. They source from farmers and fishermen who meet the highest standards. They care about animal welfare, supporting farmers, sustainability, and maybe most importantly, enjoying a good meal with people you love. All this means that not only can you cook some delicious meat, you can feel good about where it came from. In our last box, Ava and I got a whole bunch of goodies. We got some salmon, some flat iron steaks, ground bison. We got some stew beef because Ava has been hankering for her mom's beef stew recipe. Some filet mignon, a beautiful pork butt, more on that later, and a whole bunch of ground beef. Wait a minute, we didn't order any ground beef. Oh wait, that's right. If you sign up now, new members will get free ground beef for life. Yes, you heard that right. In every box you order for the lifetime of your membership, it will include free ground beef. Think of how many meatballs you can make. You could live on meatballs. You could live on meatballs. If you like to barbecue, if you like to cook meat, or even if you're just looking for a humane, sustainable source for meat, then please check out ButcherBox. Click the link in the description below to sign up and take advantage of the free ground beef for life offer. Is that correct? I'm, I'm being told it's real. Apparently that's real. You get free ground beef for life. A huge thank you to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's video. It is two in the morning. Can't sleep because I have to stay here all night. And there is no bed. 
Could have made burgers. Could have made apple pie. No, Harper. Make the thing that takes hours and hours and hours and involves staying up all night. That's a good idea. Now, when most people cook barbecue, the meat reaches a certain point where it's basically absorbed all the smoke it's gonna get. And so rather than just continuing to cook it as it is, you wrap it up in foil and cook it that way. And it helps to lock in a lot of moisture, keep it really tender and juicy. I decided not to do that. Why? Because that technique is sort of often looked down upon by like really old school barbecue guys. It's sort of like almost cheating. And I thought like, well, I'm gonna really impress these Italians and go for the full old school method, just on the fire the whole time, no wrap, nothing like that. I probably should have guessed that a bunch of Italians who know zero about barbecue would in no way be impressed by my freehand technique. So it's 6 a.m. now. Uh, the meat is still in the stall. Temperature is just stuck right there, not budging. Uh, I'm starting to get worried this won't be ready for lunch. Ava is inside, passed out on the couch. She lasted until about 2.30, poor thing. <laughs> she tried real hard to stay up with me. Ava's getting up, so it's time to make some coffee. Buongiorno, amore. <laughs> Can you see it? No, there is smoke. <laughs> yeah, there is smoke. Oh, in my eyes. <laughs> So what do you think, Ava? I don't know, I'm very smoky. This is when Ava's dad, Turi, showed up. Now, Turi is a very particular eater. Has nothing to do with the fact that he's Italian. He is just extremely hard to please when it comes to food. In other words, he was the target. He was the goal. If I could get him to like the barbecue, I had won. Lunchtime was getting close and other family members were starting to arrive. The problem is that the meat was nowhere near being done. This isn't really what one should do when it comes to barbecue, but I kind of had no choice and I had to start cranking up the heat. Luckily, I was given some extra time because Cousin Bruno showed up with a giant, giant pot of homemade pasta. He made every single piece of that pasta by hand. Cause you know, what would a barbecue be without pasta? This was very good for me though, because while people were eating the first course, I had a chance to keep cooking a little bit. Well guys, it's been a long night, but we finally hit our target temperature. Yeah, so that was a lie. We did not at all hit the target temperature. We hit a safe to eat temperature, but not the target temperature. See, barbecue is all about cooking stuff low and slow for a long period of time. And if you don't hit the right temperature, you don't get to the point where all the like collagen and fat really melts, and makes the, the, the meat really juicy. But what could I do? I had all these hungry people around me. They were all ready to eat. It was well past lunchtime. I needed to serve. And it's time to pull this barbecue off. And uh, we got a lot of meat here, but luckily we've been joined by some family. <laughs> oh. I didn't do that. How 
do you feel? Pretty good. Another lie. At this point, I realized that the barbecue, while it looked great, was not quite where I wanted it to be. It was not nearly as juicy as I wanted it. It was a little bit dry, if I'm being honest. I don't know if this had more to do with the fact that I didn't wrap the meat or the fact that it just wasn't quite at the right temperature, but it just wasn't really what I was looking for. I had really meant to film more footage at this point, really get uh, Mama Rosa's reaction, Papa Turi's reaction. I wanted to hear what they thought about the barbecue. Uh, I was running on zero sleep though, extremely exhausted, so I didn't quite get everything I was looking for. To summarize though, everyone at least was very kind and polite about it. In fact, uh, most of them said that it was really good. Uh, and the best part was that Papa Turi went back for seconds, which is, that was just perfection for me. I still was not super happy with the barbecue. However, what I've come to realize is that probably if you've never had barbecue before, mediocre barbecue is still pretty awesome. I felt like after this experience, I had gained a new respect from them. Even if the food wasn't super impressive by itself, I do think that they really appreciated the work and commitment that I had put into it. Barbecue is very simple, but it takes a long time. It takes time, it takes passion, it takes love, and I think that that works really well in sort of the Italian mindset about food, which is probably why American barbecue is actually catching on in Italy. In the big cities, you're starting to find real American barbecue joints, which is pretty cool. Come. Uh, anyway, if you'll excuse me, uh, I gotta go check on something. Not bad. I'm not cooking with my ego today, so it's time to wrap it. Okay, well I just got all the pork shredded. You ready to try some? Yes, because this valley is amazing, like always. So I can uh, try a piece. Go for it. Is it good? It's unbelievable good. Can I have another piece? Sure you can. Thank you. Did I redeem myself? Absolutely. Do you think Papa Turi would like it? I think that Papa Turi will love it too. Thanks for watching guys, we hope you enjoyed the video. Give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Also a big thank you to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's video and for providing the delicious meat. Check out the link in the description below to get your free ground beef for life. We'll see you next time. Ciao. Bye.